Right now at noon, both presidential candidates look to make a final push a little more than a week out from Election Day. Plus, another victory Monday for the Packers and their fans who stepped up for the green and gold to extend their win streak. This is News 3 Now at Noon. Thanks for joining us on a Monday afternoon. I'm Josh Breider. Right now, Madison police are investigating a shooting downtown that left two people hurt. It happened at Saboris uh, Fusion Grill off of State Street early Sunday morning. A 28-year-old man and a 31-year-old man were injured. Police say one man's injuries are not life-threatening. His condition is stable. They say the other man is in critical but stable condition. A suspect is not in custody. Three juveniles are in the juvenile reception center after allegedly beating a man at East Town Mall. A group of seven juveniles approached a man who had just bought food. Police say they told him they were hungry, so he gave them his fries, but the group demanded he give them all of his food. Police say the group threatened, then beat the man. He suffered minor injuries. While well, we are warming things up to start this week, first warm meteorologist Kelly Slifka has a look at your certified most accurate forecast and really not feeling like a couple of days before Halloween. No, yeah, not yet anyway, but Halloween, it will feel like Halloween. We'll talk more about that coming up. So we've got kind of a topsy-turvy forecast this week. And one thing we are going to have a lot of this week is a lot of wind. Now, initially, they're going to be out of the south, and that's what we're seeing at the noon hour. They're out of the south up there around 10 to 15 miles per hour. They'll be coming up closer to 15 to 20 miles per hour as the afternoon wears on. So the winds are going to continue to go up. That's going to be blowing a lot of these leaves around. 61 right now in Mass with a south wind at 14. As we do have uh, partly cloudy skies right now, we are looking at near record warmth uh, tomorrow and also Wednesday. Very mild overnight lows as well. Temperatures could be in the low 80s tomorrow, but that's going to come at that cost of some of these winds gusting up to 45 miles per hour tomorrow and tomorrow night, even into a Wednesday the way it looks right now. And out ahead of the front, uh, we're talking about some rain that'll be spreading in. It looks like it'll be mainly later Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night into early Thursday morning, but a lot of this should be clearing up just in time for the trick-or-treaters Thursday afternoon, but also it's going to be turning much cooler. All right, 61 right now in Madison, 62 in Middleton. You can probably hear the wind on my mic, so it's going to be windy the next couple of days. We're looking at temperatures in the mid to upper 60s today with partly cloudy skies and that south to southeast wind up there at 10 to 20 miles per hour. All right, we've got more winds tomorrow and also that record warmth, but that will change by Wednesday. Some pretty good chances of some rain. We'll talk more about it coming up. Some much needed rain. Yeah, absolutely. We are definitely dry in the month of October, obviously warm too. All right, Kelly, we'll see you in a few. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now to our three for the people coverage this afternoon with just over a week to go until Election Day. A new CBS poll shows the two presidential candidates tied in the battleground states. Today, Democrats and Latino leaders are going after former President Trump for comments made by a speaker at his Madison Square Garden rally Sunday. The backlash is over this controversial joke from comedian Tony Hinchcliffe. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. The Trump campaign says the remarks do not reflect the former president's views, but the damage may have been done. Less than two hours later, Puerto Rican musical superstar Bad Bunny reshared a video from Vice President Harris's campaign to his nearly 46 million followers. Harris spent Sunday in Philadelphia courting black and Latino voters. With an estimated 580,000 Latino voters in the most coveted battleground state, they could be a deciding factor in a race that polls show is neck and neck. Both political parties will be heavily campaigning in Wisconsin over these final eight days before the election. Happening today, Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance will be making two stops in the Badger State. He'll then speak in Racine this evening at 5.30. Also today, Minnesota's First Lady Gwen Walls and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden will stop in La Crosse. Meanwhile, Senator Bernie Sanders will be making a stop in Oshkosh today. Then he'll head to Madison for a rally with Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. As for the presidential nominees themselves, both will also be in Wisconsin on Wednesday. Vice President Harris will hold a rally at UW-Madison. There, she'll be joined by several musical artists. Meanwhile, former President Trump will be in Green Bay. That event will take place at the Resch Center starting at 6 Wednesday evening. Former Packer Brett Favre is set to speak at that event. Well, the Packers are now 6-2 and two on the season after knocking out the Jacksonville Jaguars, thanks in part to backup quarterback Malik Willis and kicker Brandick McManus. During second half of the game, starting quarterback Jordan Love left the game due to a groin injury. Willis came in and completed four of his five passes for 56 yards and a touchdown. Running back Josh Jacobs also had a big game, rushing for 127 yards and two touchdowns. The Packers will play Detroit for first place of the division next week Sunday. Kickoff is set for 325.
We'll still head for us this afternoon. If you have a question or concern about your plants or garden, now is the time to send us your questions via email to tips at channel3000.com. Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company will join us later in the broadcast with the answers. Again, that is tips at channel3000.com. Up next, what movie took the top spot at the box office this weekend? Plus, fast food giant McDonald's giving an update on the E. coli outbreak that sickened dozens of people. I'm Joan Balwig, and I'm here to set the record straight. I support birth control, the life and health of mothers, extending postpartum care, and fertility treatments, including IVF. I'm Joan Balwig. I have always fought for Wisconsin moms, and I always will. California banker Eric Hovde has a plan that helps him and hurts you. Here's the math. Hovde proposed $4 trillion in new tax cuts for rich people like him. And we pay for Hovde's tax breaks with a 28% cut to Social Security and a 25% cut to Medicare. Hovde even said he would raise the retirement age. You have to start changing the retirement age. Eric Hovde still helping himself and hurting you. Win Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. I'm Elizabeth Grabby, and this is home. Whether it was saving our family farm, starting my small business, or standing up to utility rate hikes, I've learned to solve problems by bringing people together. And right now, we have some real problems to solve. Corporations jacking up prices and extreme politicians banning abortion. I'm Elizabeth Grabby, and together we can bring down costs and protect the right to make our own medical decisions. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. Why hasn't she done it? Four years, radical Kamala Harris created the border crisis. Thousands of accused murderers, rapists, even terrorists pour in. Each crime they commit makes American victims. Innocent victims of Kamala's open border agenda. They were bludgeoned, raped, strangled, stabbed, shot, and murdered. Kamala created the border crisis. She won't fix it now. Make America Great Again, Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. Announcing the winners of Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Readers Poll for 2024. Congratulations to Faded Roots Boutique for winning gold for Best Clothing Store, Eclectic Fashion, and Artisan Goods in downtown Sun Prairie. See all the winners on madisonmagazine.com. When I was 27, I was diagnosed with MS. That's life-altering news. I had to prioritize my health and start taking medication. Back then, these cost $6,000 a year. Now the generics cost five times that. Senator Baldwin claims she's fighting to lower drug prices, but she's taking millions from Big Pharma and works for them. I'm not taking their money. I'm Eric Hovde and I approve this message. I'll fight the corruption and lower drug prices because I've lived it. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. McDonald's announced that the Quarter Pounder will be back on the menu at all locations sometime this week. The fast food giant said testing found that there was no E. coli present in the company's beef patties. Federal regulators believe an E. coli outbreak that has sickened 75 people in 13 states, killing one, may be linked to the slivered onions on the product, sourced from a Taylor Farms facility in Colorado Springs. McDonald's says it has stopped using onions from that facility indefinitely. Venom, the last dance, bounded to the top of the weekend box office though it earned a weaker-than-expected $51 million domestically. Smile 2 came in second with just over $9 million, and Conclave debuted third, earning a projected $6.5 million. And today, first responders can head to Krispy Kreme for a free small coffee and a donut to mark First Responders Day. There's no purchase necessary for the deal, which is limited to one per person. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Wendy Gillette. 
At the noon hour, here's your stock report. The Dow is up 274 points, NASDAQ up 86, and the S&P 500 also up in the green, 23. Pam is watching today's egg prices straight ahead, and Kelly is tracking the first warm forecast. Then later on Live at 4, we go behind the wheel with Harvey Briggs and the new Lincoln Navigator. During COVID, Joan Balwig took half a million dollars in federal loans she never paid back, then voted to block assistance to help other Wisconsin businesses grow. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. National Democrats have been a disaster. Higher prices, open borders, making our communities less safe. They can't run on their record, so they try to distract you by lying about abortion. Here's the truth. I oppose a national abortion ban. Early in a pregnancy, women should have the right to decide. We should allow for exceptions. And finally, the people of Wisconsin need to decide this issue, not politicians in Washington. I'm Eric Hovde, and I approve this message. I'm working harder than ever just to pay the bills and provide for my family. But here's what Kamala Harris thought my money should go to instead. Job training for illegal immigrants even after they commit crimes in America. Hotel rooms for illegal immigrants while our vets sleep on the street. Sex changes for illegal immigrants out of my pocket. Seriously, have these people lost their mind? Kamala Harris can never ever be our president. Preserve America PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. We count on gasoline to power our cars, our tractors, our way of life. So why is a city slicker from Miami, Elizabeth Crappie, okay banning gas-powered vehicles? Extremists like Crappie want to eliminate fossil fuels, robbing hardworking families, farmers, and small businesses of their vehicles. Miami Liz's radical ideas hurt our families and our main streets. Don't let Crappie get away with it. Born and raised right here. Todd Novak is our independent voice for common sense, protecting our way of life. Quartz takes a different approach to health insurance. We know every life well lived is a journey. And we're here to light the way at every step. That's why for 40 years we've been alongside the doctors and hospitals who know what their communities need. Because they're a part of them. Because we're a part of them. There's a fire burning in all of us. Let's ignite it together. Quartz, find your spark. Growing up here in southeast Wisconsin, hard work and getting things done are in Brian Stiles' DNA. It's why Stiles is recognized as a problem solver in Congress. He's fighting for Wisconsin families every day, combating high prices at the grocery store and gas pump. And Brian Stiles is protecting Social Security and Medicare because you've earned it. Brian Stiles, getting it done for southeast Wisconsin. Fair Shake is responsible for the content of this ad. Solid core composite frame, triple pane windows. Solid core composite frame, triple pane windows. Solid core composite frame, triple pane windows. From Scott the Window Guy and AHT Wisconsin Window. I'm Scott the Window Guy from AHT Wisconsin Windows. Our solid core composite frame triple pane window is the most energy efficient window made for Wisconsin no matter what the season. Get triple pane for the price of double at scottthewindowguy.com. This is China, and this is Wisconsin. Joan Balwig invested thousands of dollars in Chinese companies, but voted against using state funds to help grow companies here in Wisconsin. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Welcome back at noon. Also back is Pam Yonke from the Midwest <laughs> Farm Report. Pam, we missed you last week. Boy, I'll tell you, Josh, the weather on the East Coast was absolutely fabulous, just like it was here. Uh, not as, not really any bright colors, though, that we might have expected. They're pretty dry, just like we are. So I'll be sharing pictures from our trip over the course of the next couple of days right here on News 3. The picture I want to share today, though, a very important picture for Wisconsin FFA and National FFA. Congratulations to Mary Schreiber from the East Troy FFA on Friday. Mary was named the Central Region National Vice President 
president for the FFA. So she's on the national FFA officer team. Mary's a past president of the Wisconsin FFA Association and uh, continuing that quest to bring leadership across the United States as well as beyond our U.S. borders. Uh, she was selected from uh, interview candidates of 37 from across the United States that all wanted to be on that officer team. So outstanding to see that smiling face, Mary Schreiber from East Troy as the Central Region National Vice President. Wonderful news. Well, we're talking a little bit more about some news. Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation is uh, getting together with uh, Badger Sheriff staff. What they're trying to do is raise awareness and try to find more resources for people in rural communities that are facing a uh, mental health crisis, mental health challenges. We all know that farmers are under a lot of stress, uh, the weather, crop prices, uh, staffing, just all of that. And uh, sometimes they don't necessarily know where the resources are. Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation says de by partnering up with the Badger Sheriff's uh, Association, that will help to hopefully diversify where people are looking for resources. And the sheriffs remind people that they serve an awful lot of the rural community. So they find this partnership very, very satisfying. We'll see how many things we can get done. Not many things done as far as cheese today. Barrel and black cheese both remain unchanged. Today, the double-A butter, though, down two cents, 267 and a half per pound. But I promise you, Josh, tomorrow we'll start taking a look at some of the pictures from both our agriculture side and just the East Coast history side of our farm tour from last week. I'll get those over to you for tomorrow. Awesome. Fun to look forward to this week. All right, Pam, good to yep. see you. Good to have you back. Thanks, Josh. Let's get a look at your certified most accurate forecast. First War Meteorologist Kelly Slifka out on the weather patio. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, good afternoon, Josh. It is uh, warming up out here. Of course, we do have uh, quite a bit of wind that we're going to have to deal with over the next couple of days, and especially tomorrow, tomorrow night. Not going to be pretty with those winds uh, up there at uh, 45 miles per hour. So we've got some gusty winds coming our way. Also, some bugs out here on the patio as well. It's been so warm. Could be breaking some records as we go over the next couple of days. And Definitely some unseasonably warm weather for this time of October. That will come to an end on Wednesday. As the storm system we're watching right now, very slow moving storm moving across the plains. It's going to send the southerly winds our way initially, so we'll be out ahead of that cold front, and that's what's really going to boost our temperatures uh, probably in the low 80s tomorrow, so some unseasonably warm weather. All right, uh, temperatures today should be in the 60s. Our average high now is 54. Noticing that sun sets now at about uh, six minutes before 6 o'clock. Of course, this weekend, this is when we fall back. We turn those clocks back an hour. All right, our wind speeds today, they'll be up there close to 20 miles per hour this afternoon, uh, but the real story will be later tonight and also tomorrow. You're going to see these winds up there gusting up to 40, 45 miles per hour. Our future track, we're looking at partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures in the mid-60s this afternoon, mid to upper 60s. So a unseasonably mild day with our average high only in the mid-50s this time of the year. Uh, tonight, mild yet this evening, but partly cloudy skies will be in the low 60s here at 9 o'clock. And as we go into our Tuesday, starting off in the low to mid 60s already, getting off to a very mild start. And then we're shooting for those lower 80s, mid 70s at the noon hour, lower 80s, many areas going into the afternoon hours. Very close to the record. The record high tomorrow is 82. We might just uh, get very close to that tomorrow. Then things start to change going into a Wednesday. Watch this uh, area of rain. Most of this holding off to our west. Most of the daylight hours on Wednesday a solid area of rain moving across northwestern Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa. Now, as we continue this uh, track, noticing how it kind of breaks up a little bit as it gets a little bit closer to uh, the Madison area. So we might not see the heavier rains like they will see out to the west. And yes, you're not being deceived there. That is actually snow falling on the back side of the storm in eastern South Dakota and western Minnesota. But we'll possibly see a shower yet for Halloween morning. I think the uh, rain should be done with by the time the trick-or-treaters are out. But it's going to be turning much colder as that uh, cold front passes through. Now, take this with a little bit of a grain of salt, but it does look like the heaviest rains are going to stay to the west in western Wisconsin and parts of Minnesota and Iowa. Lesser amounts as you go on to the east. Right now we're at 61 in Madison, 61 also in Janesville, 60 in the Adele. So a mild noon hour. We're going to continue to warm up across Dane County. It's still 59 in Wanakee, but 62 currently in Middleton. So our first warm forecast, 66 today. The winds will pick up tomorrow. It's going to be a blustery day, but unseasonably warm, 81. As mentioned, the record's 82. 77 Wednesday. 
That's out ahead of that front. That'll bring some rain mainly later Wednesday, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And then we see cooler weather. Uh, another shot for some rain, it looks like, for Saturday and Sunday. What do you think last 80 degree temperature tomorrow? Oh, I, I definitely, well, wait, I'm going to take that back. You never say never. I remember a couple years ago, we got in the, uh, very close to 80 in early November. That's true. You never know. All right, Kelly, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, today, Howard has an easy three ingredient favorite that he says is monstrously good in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Halloween is right around the corner, and if you're looking for something that you can bring to the office or take to a Halloween party, that's not the same predictable thing that everyone else is bringing. I've got an idea. It's a three-ingredient candy bar bark that is as much fun to make as it is to share. All we need to do is combine a good amount of semi-sweet chocolate chips along with a bit of vegetable shortening and pop it in the microwave for a minute or two until it's melty. We spread this on a rim baking sheet that we've lined with wax paper. It should be about a quarter inch thick. Now, while this is still warm, we sprinkle on our favorite Halloween candy that we've cut up. And that can be anything from the gooeyest candy bars to candy corn. We'll pop it in the fridge for about a half an hour or so before breaking it up into pieces. That is if we can get into the fridge. And whether you pile them on a plate, arrange them in a gift tin, or put them out on a board so everyone can cut a piece for themselves, I can assure you it won't take long for this to disappear. To get this fun recipe, all you have to do is go to our website and look up Halloween Candy Bark. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a monstrously fun way for you to say, <laughs> ooh, it's so good. Mm. Ahead at noon, Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is here answering your plant and garden questions. Email them to tips at channel3000.com. We'll get the answers when we come back. News 3 Now, first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. The other side is lying to scare you. Truth is, Joan Balwig is a champion for women's health care. She fought hard to expand health care access for postpartum moms and supports access for IVF and birth control. We're voting for Joan Balwig because she votes for women like us. What would a Trump second term look like? It's all laid out in his Project 2025 agenda. He'd let insurance companies deny coverage for pre-existing conditions, cut Social Security and Medicare, and give tax cuts to billionaires, while the middle class pays the price with lower income and higher costs. Because for Trump, it's all about getting unchecked power while you pay the price. Donald Trump, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. For 52 years, they've been trying to get Roe v. Wade into the states. I did a great service in doing it. You want to talk about this is what people wanted? Pregnant women suffering from a miscarriage, being denied care in an emergency room because the health care providers are afraid they might go to jail, and she's bleeding out in a car in the parking lot? The freedom to make decisions about one's own body should not be made by the government. FFPAC is responsible for the content of this ad. You have a clear choice in this election. Senator Baldwin is a 38-year career politician. I'm a businessman and job creator. She supports taxpayer benefits for illegal immigrants. I'll close the border. Tammy wants to put guys and girls sports and in their bathrooms. I'll protect our daughters. Senator Baldwin abuses the political system. I'll fight the corruption. I'm Eric Covdy and I prove this message. I'd be honored to have your vote. The right to vote is the foundation of democracy. For decades, we have been forced to fight voter suppression to increase voter turnout in the black community, while overcoming barriers designed to undermine voter participation. The NAACP of Wisconsin believes your vote matters, and we urge you to double check your voter information at myvotewisconsin.gov. In-person absentee voting begins Tuesday, October 27th. Now let's be all in to vote on November 5. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, 
while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. Lisa Briggs with the Bruce Company is here answering your plant and garden questions. Email them to tips at channel3000.com. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Doesn't feel like Halloween week, does it? Oh, it does not feel <laughs> like Halloween week. We got some 80s in the forecast. Feels like, I don't know, July. I know. It just doesn't <laughs> feel right. What do you got here today? Okay, so this is a cyclamen and a traditional cyclamen. It's a really nice sort of easier to care for holiday plant than yep. some of the others. And this is a new genetically altered cyclamen. Oh, okay. So instead of the flowers facing up, they face down. I was looking at that. And yeah. they have this modified calyx, which is a contrasting color. So something super cool. And very different. In the land of cyclamen. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Awesome. <laughs> Let's get to the questions today. Deb asks, should I trim my hydrangea now or in the spring? Never. Any other special care tips for it? So hydrangeas, for the most part, uh, set their flowers on new wood, even the newer, fancier ones. So it is best to wait until spring when your hydrangea starts to pop those buds, and then you can trim it back. Just trim it back to just above uh, a bud, and it'll still flower for you. All right, Sherry says she has a four-year-old oriental lily that is nearly five feet tall. Can she cut it back, and when is the best time to do it? You can go ahead and cut those back now. I, I would check on the stems and see if there are any, like where the leaf axles are, um, little tiny bulblets, uh, some, sometimes oriental lilies. So you could just take those and sort of shake them around in your garden and then cut the the stems back and put those in the compost. Question three from Marsha. Marsha asks if she can cut back her three clematis plants that she planted this summer or leave them. It depends on the kind of clematis that you have. There are three different types and they're all pruned a little bit differently. So please email the plant desk. That's plantdesk at brucecompany.com and describe the flowers to them and then we'll be able to tell you the best pruning method for the clematis that you have. Carrie wants to know, what is the correct way to prepare her asparagus for winter? These were planted in early May 2023 and appear to have done very well. They're also hoping that they're able to harvest asparagus next year. She should be able to take some of them. Maybe not a heavy harvest, but a good harvest next year. If the leaves have started to yellow, then you can go ahead and cut those back to the ground. Leave a little stubble. And I would certainly feed them if you haven't done that. Some good compost, some composted manure. If you can get a hold of some nice aged manure from a farm, that would be great. All right, some good questions today. Yeah. Happy summer Happy slash summer. Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe November is almost here later this week. Doesn't feel so like it. So weird. <laughs> Let's get to Kelly now with the final check of that roller coaster of a forecast. Yeah, we uh, continue with the unseasonably mild temperatures and maybe getting close to some records over the next couple of days. In fact, the record high tomorrow is 82. We're forecasting 81, 78 on Wednesday. We're forecasting a high of 71. Either way, unseasonably warm weather for the uh, last week of October. All comes to an end later Wednesday as a front moves in. That'll bring us some rain that'll linger into Thursday morning, but most of that should be out of here by the time the trick-or-treaters are out. But finally, like, feeling like October with highs and low 50s and overnight lows in the 30s to around 40. More active forecast for sure. All right, Kelly, thanks for joining us. Make it a great afternoon.